Hey guys, Sun Dad here. We're gonna talk today about how you make your Outlaw Rogue a gamer in 8.2. We'll talk about talents, traits, and essences. I think that's all we'll go over today. We'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about stats too. Um, so first of all, let's look at talents. And we're gonna be focused on Mythic Plus here. Uh, I may make another video talking more specifically about the raid. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to talk about keys. So we look at the level 15 row. You take quick draw every time. Level 30 row. Uh, this is preference, but if you're not taking acrobatic strikes, I think you're crazy. Uh, we'll come back to the 45 row because that's the only one we're really going to talk about too much here. Uh, level 60 row, default to cheat death. Uh, there are some situations you want to run elusiveness, as usual, in keys. Uh, typically, these are high tyrannical, temple of Sethralis, uh, even high... Fortified Temple, Elusiveness is fine, uh, as well as King's Rest. Both Tyrannical and Fortified, Elusiveness can be the play. I prefer to just run it Tyrannical Weeks uh, for the first boss and the third boss. Uh, elusiveness allows your Feint to affect Spit Gold on the first boss, and it allows it to affect uh, the Severing Axe debuff on the third boss. Uh, but you can also parry the Severing Axe debuff if you're good about spreading and seeing who's going to be on. Uh, so it's a little less useful there, but... There are situations you end up with the debuff, and Elusiveness is super good for that. Um, and then Temple, we're obviously talking about Galavast. Uh, interestingly enough, even without Elusiveness, Faint is pretty strong on Tyrannical Temple, because the damage of the AoE that Galavast does, that just the random AoE is affected by Faint, but the damage that the Pillars do is not, unless you have Elusiveness. The damage of the AoE scales with Tyrannical, the damage of the Pillars scales with Fortified. So both Tyrannical and Fortified weak elusiveness is strong. Uh, typically your healer, it's easier for them to heal through on Fortified just because it's a shorter fight so they can dump mana. Uh, so you may want to keep Cheat or Fort weak so you don't get one shot by any 360 no scope cleaves in the second boss room or just standing in shit in general. Uh, cheat's still very good for Fort. Uh, 75 row, you take Prey on the Weak, always, forever. This is still one of the most underrated things Outlaw does. 10% bonus damage to targets that you're stunning, which is usually the priority target for everybody in your group, is massive. Um, it's actually really good against the Tides Emissaries this season, because the Tides Emissaries can be stunned. Um, Enchanted can be stunned as well, but stunning the Enchanted doesn't, like, you're not doing damage to it, so it doesn't matter. Um, but it's very good for the Tides, and obviously other trash that you want to kill. You can't stun the, uh, the Void Emissaries, which is worth noting. Uh, doesn't mean you should be between the eyes and other shit. Void Emissaries need to die, you still go between the eyes, the Void Emissaries. Um, particularly if you're running Ace Traits. But, yeah, Prey on the Week's really good. Level 90 talent, we still default to Alacrity. If you want to run, like, a Vision of Perfection loaded dice... Setup you can. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's strong enough, um, but it's it's certainly not weak. So if that's a playstyle you prefer, go ahead with that. Um, my recommendation is Alacrity always, though, and never take Slice and Dice. And then level 100, you're taking Dancing Steel for every key that you ever do. I don't care if it's Tyrannical Temple. I don't care if it's Tyrannical King's Rest. You don't gain enough from Blade Rush to make it worth losing Dancing Steel for the rest of the dungeon. So let's talk about the 45 row. There's been a lot of discussion about Vigor versus Deeper Strat versus Mark for Death. Um, everywhere. Particularly the past couple days, the Ravenholt Discord's been talking a lot about it. Um, and what I'll say on this talent row is in 99% of situations, it doesn't matter which one you pick. They're extremely close uh, across many different target amounts, uh, fight durations, even depending on your gear, it's very close. Um, originally at the beginning of the expansion I thought it was if you ran like some low haste you'd need vigor, or if you ran high haste you'd swap out, If maybe you needed multiple ace traits to make deeper worth, um, and it pretty much works out like this. Vigor gives you more flexibility, um, it's easier to make mistakes and not end up low energy for when you need to gouge things or if you need to hit a Vanish Cheap Shot or um, just general utility stuff that costs energy. Uh, you're punished 
less by not making sure you have energy for those. Take Vigor. So Vigor is obviously the easiest to play with. Um, deeper strat for most setups, even with me just having one ace trait. Sims highest for single target, so just for boss damage. Um, and also performs best for single target for boss damage. Um, and it also ends up typically being higher damage early on in the pack. Uh, higher burst with between the eyes. Burst AoE when you're cleaving your between the eyes with Blade Flurry. Um, and Mark for Death, if you can play around with, can be very strong as far as getting resets. Um, even if you don't get resets, Mark for Death is... All these are within 1% of each other, assuming no resets on Mark for Death. So if you if you can game Mark for Death really well, it can pull ahead potentially. Um, typically doesn't pull ahead on bosses, but on AoE it's, it's possible. Um, the thing is, most trash works out where things don't die very early, right? So you don't typically, in most trash pulls, you don't end up with Mark for Death resets until after your second Mark for Death cast just naturally. Uh, meaning that the Mark for Death resets come towards the end of the pack. And that's typically when you're kind of already moving towards the next pack anyway. Uh, things aren't threatening. You're not trying to burst anything down at the end. Uh, typically, obviously, there are situations where this happens. Um, and I think that's <clears throat> a little bit of what takes away from Mark for Death. Um, basically, what I've been running is I run Deeper Strat. I prefer the boss damage. We do a shitload of AoE already. Even if Deeper Strat is a little bit behind Mark for Death and AoE... I think having higher boss damage, and you'll see that in my essence choices as well, is very good for a spec like Outlaw that already does so much consistent AoE, does burst AoE, just never runs out of damage in a cleave scenario. Uh, so deeper strats been my my favorite, but all three are so close. You can really you can pick whichever one you prefer, and you'll notice a difference in how things feel, but overall performance it's unlikely that you notice any difference whatsoever. Um, so let's talk about essences then, since I kind of touched on that there. Uh, you'll notice I have not farmed out Blood of the Enemy because I fucking hate Battlegrounds. Um, so w the things I'll say about Blood of the Enemy are from talking to other high-level rogues, people like Lashka, Yoda, Pretzel... Um, Names you may or may not have heard of, but players that play at a high level in Mythic Plus. Um, so we'll talk about not Blood of the Enemy at first. We'll talk about... We'll just go down the list. Essence of Focusing Iris is obviously a shitload of damage. It's big AoE. It's big AoE burst. Um, it's decent single target. And the Haste Miner is solid. Um, we're talking about Majors here. However... Because Outlaw functions in a way where it's, we have so much consistent damage all the time, it's a little bit difficult to find places to use Essence of Focusing Iris without overcapping energy or being in the middle of a Blade Flurry charge or just not getting a high value cast on the majority of the mobs. Uh, this becomes easier when you get rank 3 and you can move. Uh, but typically, like the best time to use Essence of Focusing Iris in most packs is right on the pole. But the way dungeons work is you don't always have everything grouped up right on the pole. And then if you don't use it right on the pole, that means you're entering into a blade flurry window. And typically if you didn't adrenaline rush on the pole, by the end of that blade flurry window, you're popping an adrenaline rush, which is a spot that you don't want to cast as a focusing iris inside adrenaline rush. And if you don't, maybe you have a kick coming up or you have a gouge coming up and you, you don't want to invest the full three, three and a half seconds to get this focusing iris off and have to cancel it early. Um, so while the damage it does is very good, it's like in a vacuum. It's difficult in a dungeon setting to find a maximum value use out of it, pack to pack to pack to pack. And that's why I've, I've started steering away from focusing iris. It's still very good. Um, certainly strong on fortified weeks. Definitely stronger on fortified weeks and tyrannical weeks. Uh, so this is something you can play with, but it's not my number one recommendation. It's within, like, the, the top three or four. There's four four essences I think are very good for us and keys, and this is one of the four. Uh, Condensed Life Force, however, is not one of the four. It performs really well in Raid, but all the dungeons that I've used it in, it has felt very weak. Uh, the AoE from the Major is, like, whatever. 
the single target is obviously very good for bosses. But if you're using an essence and then it's only like its big value is only on bosses and it's a three minute cooldown, it becomes like difficult to find very good use places for it. And the miner surprisingly does much less damage than I thought it was going to do. Uh, so even with the 5% damage boost, that you, you get a 5% damage buff for 6 seconds when it deals damage. Um, doesn't proc enough, from what I've seen, to make it <clears throat> worth using. Uh, so I put an X on Condensed and Keys. Uh, Lucid Dream, this I think should be your default miner always, forever. This is always your miner. Lucid Dreams is insane. It, Lucid Dreams is a lot of what unlocks Deeper Strat and Mark for Death as opposed to Vigor, because we have enough energy to do everything we want to do. Uh, you get some passive healing on yourself, and the uptime on the versatility buff, the 367 versatility, is huge. It's typically like 75-80% to 80 of the dungeon you have this first. So, this miner gives you energy regen, and 367 verse for doing nothing. So you take it. Uh, Purification Protocol is another option for the Major, another one in the 4. Uh, obviously, this does less damage than Essence of Focusing Iris, but it costs you 1 GCD. It's a big deal. Um, I think also you can look for better use cases of this to get the 10% damage buff when an enemy dies on, think like the, the first pull in Shrine, the first two pulls in Shrine actually, where you have the initiates in the first pull that it's very likely one of them dies to this beam and then you get 10% buff on the Templar there. Next pull you have the globs, very likely that something dies to that beam and you have a 10% buff for the, uh, the casters that are left over. Um, or dungeons like uh, like a Tall Dazar Sarid Pax, or most of the trash in Siege, where you have little mobs surrounding the big mobs you care about. Um, I think those will end up being the best use cases for Purification Protocol. Not to mention you have the chance to just annihilate something and kill it. Like There's a chance on hit. It seems to be very low. You get maybe anywhere from 0 to 2 per dungeon, typically, uh, where it just one-shots a mob. Um... So if it's consistent enough to perform and it has that high upside, protocol is still good. This is in one of this is one of the four so far, along with focusing iris. That I think is very good in keys. Um, then we talk about crucible of flame. Crucible of flame owns. I think this is overtuned. I think it does too much damage. It's pure single target, pure priority damage, and this ends up being when I the major and the minor combined about ten percent of my overall damage over the course of a dungeon, and it's pure prio damage. It only hits bosses, it only hits the thing you want it to, it's not RNG hitting a mob that doesn't matter. Uh, this has been my default for the past, I guess it's going on a week now, and I've liked it in every dungeon, both tyrannical and fortified weeks. Uh, we don't really need help with our AoE, so this helping our priority damage and our boss damage is big. We keep up with the big boss damage classes, aside from like the crazy, the nutty casters like your fire mages and your, your boomkins from what I've seen. We won't quite keep up with them, but, like, we almost do with Crucible of Flame. It's actually wild. Um, and it also only costs a GCD every 30 seconds, which Outlaw can fit in. Especially when not running Vigor, you do have some dead space um, when you low roll Lucid Dreams procs. That you fit this in and you just own. Um, so this is, this is my number one recommendation for the Essence that you should play in Keys. Um, however, and this I'll, I will get to test myself... Someday soon, I am finally going to farm out Blood of the Enemy. Uh, from talking to the boys playing Blood of the Enemy, when you play a heavy Ace Up Your Sleeves build and deeper strat, the burst damage that you can get out of Blood of the Enemy and the single target, it ends up keeping up on single target because you just line it up with it between the eyes, um, has been shown to be pretty big. Uh, you've seen some of the world first plus 20 keys. Yoda's been running this. Um, talking to both Pretzel and Lashka over the past two days, and they've been running this a lot and having a lot of success. <clears throat> and Blood of the Enemy itself doesn't end up being like a huge portion of your damage. I think from what I've talked to them, it's anywhere between like 3 to 5%. Uh, but you get the big boost to your other abilities with the crit <clears throat> damage as, long, as well as the crit chance. Um, and then you just get additional crit, and you have the haste proc from the miner. So this is a good essence as well. Uh, so I think I think the those four options, the Focusing Iris, Crucible of Flame, uh, Purification Protocol, and Blood of the Enemy will be the four that you choose from. 
I don't know that the difference between them is all that big, and you can kind of play around what your group needs. With Focusing Iris obviously being Mass AoE, along with Purification Protocol, Crucible Flame being more single target focused, and Blood of the Enemy being somewhere in the middle. Uh, so depending on your comp, you might want to play something else. Uh, like, if you're running Triple Outlaw Rogue, I think you just play Crucible to get some single target damage roll in there. And if you're playing with, like, Double Cast or the own bosses, maybe you play Iris. Uh, don't care about your boss damage. Um, and that's... That's that. Worth noting, all these scale with Verse. It's very good for Outlaw. The damage of these scales with Versatility. Obviously, we're a class that likes to stack Versatility uh, alongside Crit. Um... We'll talk briefly about these other ones. World Vein Resonance is a no. Uh, even in most raid fights, I don't think this is good with other people using it. There's too much movement. It's hard to stay near them. Uh, Conflict and Strife. The math I'm looking at says this passive is not good enough. Though I see people trying to tell me that it is, but I can't figure the math out. I can't figure it out. Eight stacks. 24 verse. Less than two, it's like around 200 versatility, right? But you could just run this and get 350 haste. I guess they're close. Maybe you see conflict and strife when you unlock the 65 miner. Like you're, we're thinking about what our next miner is going to be. Uh, so that's worth considering. By the time you're 65, you probably have rank 3, so that's not something to worry about. Unbound force, I think, is just too undertuned. Just doesn't do enough. Uh, vision Perfection we talked about a little bit earlier on. If you play a loaded dice build, Vision Perfection is a good essence. But I don't think that build has enough value. Uh, in Ripple of Space, you're just not playing. Uh, so that's it for essences. Let's talk about traits. <clears throat> not much has changed in traits except Brigand Blitz has lost a little bit of value. Because we have very good energy regeneration from Lucid Dreams now, it's Brigand Blitz is less necessary to kind of equalize your energy levels. A lot of times, previously, before Lucid Dreams, Adrenaline Rush was used as a way to stabilize your energy a lot of the time. Like, obviously, you're getting attack speed from it as well, but you'd use it to stabilize your energy pack to pack. Like, one pack, you'll have a bunch of energy in the next pack. By the, by the end of that pack, you're running out, and then you don't have full energy or resources going into the next pack, and Adrenaline Rush comes up, and it helps you stabilize your energy back to full. Um, also on bosses, it worked like this. Uh, but now with Lucid Dreams, it happens less often, so Brigand Blitz has lost a little bit of value. Um, deeper stratagem builds and just us gaining more power in general has increased the value of Ace, uh, especially when you consider this 5% additional damage on your finisher moves scales the more damage you do right five percent becomes a bigger impact as your character does does more damage baseline um so i think ace is the proper trait to stack this season as opposed to deadshot well deadshot is still very good um i'm preferring ace builds you see i only have one trait i wish i had more uh, i will have more soon and we'll talk about where the pieces come from in a second um lightborn infusion is still the most underrated trait in the game this thing owns this is a proc that just gives you 20 percent crit for 14 seconds like hello people are bugging out about how good blood of the enemy is giving you 25 percent crit granted there's crit damage there too 25 percent crit for 10 seconds this gives you 20 for 14 and it's a trait and it's passive and it just happens and the uptime is relatively high like this trait owns Deadshot, also, like I said, still very good. If you can't find ace pieces, you play Deadshot, and maybe if you don't run any ace, you default to Vigor or Mark for Death, but I still think Deeper Strat is very good with Deadshot. Um, obviously, we still have Wits. You want one Wits, always, all the time. There is no question, there's no exceptions. There's no dungeon you don't run Wits in. Uh, and then... The raid trait, there's one raid trait that we can consider. Uh, let's see if we find one. Oh yeah, it's on the hat. 
Undulating Tides. Single target, this sims exceptionally well. It performs exceptionally well if you can stay above 50%. Uh, so then you start thinking about, okay, does the survivability aspect of this thing matter to me? Is that a bonus or not a bonus? And most of the time in keys, dropping below 50% is not a huge deal. Um, and you don't even, like, there was a big discussion about Treacherous Covenant last season what your uptime was and the uptime and keys ended up exceptionally high and you needed to fall below 50 percent for it to proc so really in keys this 50 percent nonsense is not very relevant so then you look at damage it's pure single target damage it's really good single target damage but the problem is that all of outlaws other traits do single target and aoe damage so i don't think running tides and keys is the play uh and i don't think there's any other traits you should really be looking for you really just want one Wits, you want your Blightborn, and then a combination of Deadshot and Ace up your sleeve for the rest of your traits is your set. Like, that's all you really want. On this row, the overwhelming, or the secondary, whatever you call this row, overwhelming power is God tier. And then just below that are things like Gut Ripper and Heed My Call. Uh, but you, you would prefer to find pieces with overwhelming power on that, which we'll go through here in a second. We'll look at our dungeon pieces first. <clears throat> for hats, you're aiming for the Iron Tide Captain's hat. This is Ace, Deadshot, Overwhelming Power, and a Vamp Speed, which is highly underrated and extremely strong. This is this is your goal. Um, there are other pieces that can be okay. Obviously, the Enveloping Leviathan with Wits and Ace, or Brigand and Ace with an Overwhelming Power, also a strong pick. Fluid machine, machin, fluid machinations, machinations, not good, don't get it. Uh, flash powder hood can be good as well, wits dead shot, or again dead shot, and then you can run heed my call, or unstable flames, also a good pick in the hat slot. Uh, this is a piece you don't want, high altitude turbine, no. <clears throat> and then slithering loa is actually a decent pick. Uh, swirling sands is a similar effect to uh, bladeborn in that it gives you crit for a duration. It ends up being slightly weaker than Blightborn, uh, but it's okay. It can also fill your wit slot, it can get you a dead shot, and it has overwhelming power. And Impassive Visage is also a decent defensive trait. Uh, so hats, there's a lot of good options. You can, uh, you can get the Slithering Loa, you can get the Iron Tide Captain's Hat, you can get the Circlet, circlet of Enveloping Leviathan, or the Flash Powder Hood. Like, those are all good. Iron Tide Captain's Hat is what you're gun gunning for, though. For shoulders, all you care about is Gorak Tulls. the best shoulders in the game for you. Blightborn's OP. Uh, there are other shoulders that are decent. You get Deadshot Brigand on the Pistoliers, Ace Brigand on the Tentacle Laced. But really, you just want Goroctals. And you can slot in Deadshot or Ace, depending on what you prefer. I think the Ace is just better right now, uh, but that's your call. And then. Dungeon chests, we have Spymaster's wraps are bad. Venture Co., whatever that word is best, very good. Wits, Ace, Overwhelming Power. Typically, chess pieces where you want to get your wits, because most of the good chess pieces just have wits on them. Uh, so ideally, you're not getting wits from another slot. You can also run Vest of Reverent Adoration as well. You have... Wits Deadshot, or if you do have a piece like the first boss piece, which we'll talk about in a second, has Wits on it. So if you do have a Wits in another slot, this piece can be good for Ace Deadshot. Gore Splattered, not the best. Filthy Transfusion isn't terrible, but you don't want to be running it. Cephalohide is decent as well. Deadshot Brigand, again, we talked about how Brigand lost a little bit of value, though, and I don't think it's one of the preferred traits, but it's still, like, it's just below the preferred traits. So if you are running one, as you can see, I'm still running a 410 Cephalohide. Um, it's not the end of the world. And then, Raymond of the Blighted Tribe, you don't really want. You can get away with running Ace, Ruinous Bullet, or Ace, Snake Eyes. Uh, but, really you have three decent to great options on the chest slot. You have pretty much just one awesome option on the shoulders, but there's stuff you can make work. And then the hat, you have one amazing, and then three bearable hats. 
Um, but then when we look at the raid, we're, we're going to get to what I think the fist setup is, but I just want to look at all the pieces first. If you look at the raid, you have the hat. This is what I'm wearing now. It has wits deadshot. Good hat for finding your wits piece. Uh, you have the chest off behemoth, which is wits ace. Overwhelming power. This piece is excellent. And you should be bonus rolling this pe boss every week for Diver's Folly anyway. Diver's Folly, from what I've seen, works out to like 3% of your damage overall. And it's not budgeted in a way that you lose stats. So you just get the total amount of stats that you w normally would on a weapon, plus 3% bonus damage. So Diver's Folly owns. Uh, the shoulders off Radiance are very good also. You have Deadshot Ace on the shoulders. You're missing overwhelming power, but you have the option to Heed, Unstable, and Gut Ripper, which are the three next best secondary traits, and Resounding Protection. Uh, so this, these shoulders own and that's the first you can get a setup that's fine on the first three bosses like Even if you're running double wits because you got this hat like whatever dude you end up with two wits Two dead shot two ace like that's a fine setup. So if you're only clearing the first three bosses and It takes you a little bit to roll your pieces or you get unlucky rolling pieces from the vendor You can get a dope max item level set from just the first three bosses uh, Ashvane we don't want this arcane heart is not good enough Brigand's not good enough. You don't want that, but you're probably bonus rolling this boss anyway because Coral's insane. Uh, Orgazoa. This is not a bad shoulder piece if you need to fill your wit slot. Ace, wits, overwhelming power. Uh, defensive trait is not very good, but that's okay. Queen's Court. We have Deadshot Undulating, which is actually nutty single target. Like those two traits single target. Very good. Close to Deadshot Ace. Um, with Gut Ripper on it. So this, this chest isn't terrible, but like I said, typically your chest piece is what has the wits on it. Um, this piece is eh, eh. It could be okay in the raid, but we don't really want mastery. Loyal to the end. And Snake Eyes is a meh. But it does have resounding. It does have overrunning power. And for high freeholds, resounding pieces are actually very important. Then Najara doesn't drop shit. And that's it. So... What I think the BIS loadout is for, this is actually for both raid and for keys, is the Iron Tide Captain's Hat from the vendor. So be running Ace, Deadshot, Overwhelming Power, Vamp Speed. Gorok Tolls, which is Ace, Blightborn, Overwhelming Power, and then a Foot Pad, which is meh, but mobility's okay. And then the chest piece off Blackwater Behemoth, which is your wits, your third ace, overwhelming power, and then you can take lying in wait or bulwark of the masses. Both are pretty underwhelming, uh, but you have one vamp speed, which is big. And then I would I would collect and keep pieces that have resounding protection because there are gonna be situations that resounding protection is very good. Think freehold. Freehold is like the big resounding protection. I love having a side set that just has triple resounding protection and still does like pretty good damage for when I run big freeholds. Uh, so more reason to bonus roll Blackwater Behemoth. Uh, now if you if you get say you get the hat off this man and you don't get a chest by the time you roll for pieces and you have blade or guard tools already you can roll chest and that's not a bad idea like you have options for chest but those are what I think the best options are um, I guess we can talk about trinkets too uh, I think ink pod coral is gonna be your best setup or uh, font of Ajara coral uh, the way Coral works is when something dies while well, it has a debuff on it, you just get the crit buff and it doesn't put the use on cooldown, so then you just apply it to another target and you start doing damage again and then you get the crit buff. So Coral is like far and away our best Mythic Plus trinket. Uh, the Punch Guard, if you can get a big one, is pretty good too. Gives you priority damage. Um, Ink Pod is just... Actually works out. This 435 usually works out to like between 3 and 5% of my damage over the course of a dungeon, which is pretty high for a trinket with agility on it. Um, so don't sleep on the ink pod. <clears throat> Combined with coral, it's very good on bosses too, because you can almost guarantee the crit, because it's affecting crit at thirty percent. Uh, the stacks don't cleave from blade flurry. Neither do the ones from coral, but it still does big damage. Font of Ajara obviously is a huge agility boost that you can use pre-pull. Uh, what other trinkets are there? Oh, the file. This is performed okay. It's just worse than Ink Pod, though. It just does less damage than Ink Pod. This is usually about 2, 2.5% two of my overall damage, and this has 10 item levels on my Ink Pod, so it's just. It's just worse. But it's not terrible. Um, and then you have the obvious dungeon trinkets that have been good forever Loaded Dice and Spyglass. 
uh, though I don't think <clears throat> they're better than the ink pod coral option. Um, and also, Electromental in a jar was buffed, and this isn't terrible anymore. This is this performs a little bit better at equal item level. Performs a little bit better than the file of Arcane Tempest. So if you get a big one of these, it's probably good. Um, and Plume is up, still good. So really, what you're gunning for are the two raid trinkets, Coral and Ink Pod. But you have a lot of options in between. You have Punch Card, you have File, you have Dice, you have Plume, you have Jar, and Spyglass, which can also be all be good especially if you roll one of those high and it's not like oh man i'm sad about this like you're pretty happy uh, last but not least we'll talk about stats crit and verse still stack them haste is less important now mastery you want to avoid even though i have i have way too much mastery um if you're running a ace up your sleeve deeper strat crit becomes more valuable uh, so you want your crit a little bit higher than your verse but both are very good to stack uh, you can see my gems are all over the place because like i was stacking verse to try out full verse builds and then halfway through I got bored but I didn't want to re-jam all my shit so just new pieces got crit so we'll end up full crit eventually but uh, and then enchants on your weapon typically force multiplier deadly nav is the play but gale force can be good verse can be good uh, run a bunch of random sims or don't and just pick two of those four and you're fine uh, difference isn't going to be gigantic um and I think that's that, man. This is we're still early in the season. We're st still figuring out how to make Outlaw even better, like how to play around the tools that our spec has for the emissaries. Uh, and I'll probably make a video about that coming up soon too. I found some cool things we can do with both the tides and the enchanted emissaries uh, that make us very valuable. Um, and that's that. I recommend, as my final sentence, three ace, one wits, one deadshot, one blightborn, flames main, lucid minor, this talent setup, and fucking get in there, boys. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to my channel on YouTube, as well as following me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash undadtv. We have MDI coming up soon, which I plan to stream most of. So you can watch us there while we're competing in the dungeon tournament. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and I will uh, I'll try to help you out, boys. Peace out.